How are you? I'm doing well this morning. So, um, I understand, and I've been in a lot of your children productions that you've put on for St. John. Uh -huh. We had Solid Rock Cafe, um, we had Sermon on the Mount, we had so many of those, and you do a great job of that. What motivates you? Um, well, I, I, from a spiritual point of view, what I really want the kids to do is to start seeing themselves as the teller of Jesus' story. And we do that through music. Music is one of the main ways that I connect with God. And so um, by putting the message to music, picking songs that are worth memorizing, worth keeping in your brain for the rest of your life, is um, I think what, what motivates me. Plus it's just fun. I've got a lot of theater in my soul and it's just... <laughs> and, theater! And um, this is just one way to use theater to, to honor God. Yeah, those songs. I don't know who picks them out, but I still know them. And that was from like four years ago. I still know them. That's awesome. We still in my family launch into Jonah's solo when he's in the belly of the whale. Dear Lord, I'm a little bit afraid. No, Lord, make that very much afraid. <laughs> we, we launch into that little piece kind of often in my home. That's good. Um, so, um, over the years, how have you seen the, the children's area like change um, for, I guess, that area? Well, um, the size of youth group, the size of Sunday school has gotten bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller, bigger, smaller over time. But one of the things I've always appreciated about this congregation is children's ministry and youth ministry has always been a priority. I have attended this congregation for over 40 years now, and there has always been a staff member dedicated to youth and children's ministries. That's and great. that's one thing that was super important to me when my kids were growing up, when my kids were in youth group. I just think it's so important for kids to have people, teenagers especially, to have people other than their parents who love them and love Jesus. And so I've always prayed that those people would be present when my kids were growing up. discounted rates, packages of food. Um, we've been involved in the shelter downtown for about all the 12 years that they have had the emergency shelter overnight. We staff that for two weeks a year. Um, we do things like the, the compassion event where we had um, free dental and medical uh, assistance available to anyone in the community. Um, I think Oh, and also coming up very soon are the Christmas gifts to the homeless kids in the, in the shelters. Um, basically, I think we all know that the Lord said, if we're not out there taking care of people, we have a hard time claiming that we are his people. So that's something we're always looking for newer ways. Right now we're trying to find ways better to deal with the schools and the kids in school because that's where um, a connection can be made. Um, and, and those are the people, teachers and schools know the kids and they know their needs. So we've begun trying to make connections there. And I would say that in the future, um, we're just looking for more and better ways to witness to our faith out in the, in the community, whatever comes up. So we're looking for more ways to do that. So uh, can you describe your most memorable outreach or sermon event? Well, actually, I have to give you two. One would be what we did one about a couple, few years ago uh, that we called, what was it again? Faith on the Go. Faith on the Go? 
Yes, Faith on the Go. I kept getting compassion in my head. Faith on the Go, where we had the whole congregation, and that was a real eye-opener for many people who didn't realize how many of us were involved and how many things were out there and all the things, opportunities that they had to do this. But another one is something that I kind of do on the side, and this is I get money from Thrivent for a project, and a group of us get together and we connect with the schools and ask what child needs help right now? Maybe a pair of shoes, a coat, or whatever. And our shoppers go and find that, buy it, and take it to the school and give it to the child. We don't even see the children. It's just an outreach to try to take care of little emergencies that aren't going to take, get taken care of any other way. And that field, that sits with me in my heart because I was a teacher and I know that these kids have those kinds of needs. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I've seen, uh, uh, as far as our Bible studies are concerned, uh, uh, an increase in the level of the way Scripture is taught. Uh, a lot more people are participating, so people are apparently are getting more educated with uh, and comfortable scripture, with yes. Scripture, and uh, are more open to s discuss the various parts. And we should uh, have a lot of discussion rather than just sitting there. And and observing what is said. Yeah, yeah, so there's a lot of more participation, not yeah. just the person giving the lecture. It's not a, does it feel like a lecture in Bible study? No. What does it feel like? It feels like a, a, a lot of interaction between the, the person uh, leading the Bible study and also with uh, the other. God thought it was important enough to give it to us, we ought to pay a little bit of attention to it. And secondly, how are we to know who God is? How are we supposed to know what all of this means, church? How are we supposed to know how we are supposed to live our faith and how we get the strength to be able to live our faith if we don't study the Word of God? If we don't have the Bible, we're just like the rest of folk. So this is the worship team, and today I'm asking them a question. Um, why do you guys like to be on the worship team? I love to be on the worship team because I share a gift that God has given me with wonderful, wonderful people. And I love it. It's just the highlight of my week, rehearsing and being able to praise God and with my friends and to play with an amazing group of people. There are very many talented people up here, and it's so much fun to come up and worship with them and jam with them and then relax. <laughs> what a better way to serve the Lord than to do it with our music. We can share it with our congregation. We share it with each other. The camaraderie is just over the top great. It's a, what a blessing, and you know, it's like hitting the lottery. It's yep. wonderful. <laughs> I love to share music with friends here and with the congregation. It's just so much fun. <laughs> My name is Tracy and I am blessed and grateful to be uh, part of this worship team um, for many years actually and um, I suppose years to come, God willing, and wonderful group of friends, church friends, neighbor friends. Do you guys like to tell them what parts you play in the band? Because I know there's like more than one. <laughs> yes, I'm Jackie and I'm a vocalist. I'm Sue and I'm percussion. I'm Jan and I'm an alto. I'm Diane, I'm guitar and vocals. I'm Joan and I'm a vocalist. I'm Tracy and I play piano. And I'm Emily. <laughs> Good morning. 
morning. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Good. So how have you seen the church uh, change for the youth and congregation over the years? Uh, let's see. Um, well, I think the church itself is, is kind of a, uh, a family. And so you watch kids grow up, uh, come and go. Um, they come through the the children's program and then on up into middle school and high school and you watch them develop. Um, and so there's that sort of natural uh, type of change going on. Um, but it's also neat to see when they're when they're little they start to take on leadership roles and and they get more involved. Um, that's always exciting to see that happen. Um, as for adults, you know, it's it's kind of the same thing. Um, people learn that they can do certain things, they get involved in certain ministries, and and uh, find that they they have gifts in certain areas, and and then they kind of take off and and go where the Lord is kind of leading them. So so that kind of seems like it's an overall positive yeah. thing that's going on there. Yeah, I think very. so. It, it can be very much so. My wife and I attended St. John for the first time, and I'll never forget Pastor Weber being in the pulpit. And after the service was over, he so warmly greeted us, made us feel so comfortable, and we've been here ever since. So what keeps you coming back? Oh, I think uh, you know, that kind of hospitality, that kind of fellowship, that kind of friendliness. Uh, in 22 years, we have confirmed three grandchildren. One more to go starting this year. Uh, we were part of the building of this beautiful new sanctuary. Uh, just the, the forward motion, the forward everything that goes on at St. John. You know, we love the activities, we love the quilting, we love the soup suppers at Easter time, and we love the, uh, well, the, the great future that St. John has. Yeah, well, those quilts. Some Sundays they have those all over the pews. That's really great. Oh, yeah. That's a beautiful sight yeah. there. And what a warm feeling you get when you walk into that sanctuary with mm -hmm. those quilts all over the, the, the pews. Yeah. yeah, and those go to a good cause too. They, they're they donated, aren't they? Sometimes? Yes, yes, they are. Yeah, Most of them are donated uh, to uh, various causes, free of charge. And there's always a few left over that will... Uh, I mean, it's so, there's so many ways it's impacted my faith. Um, first of all, Bible studies, just getting involved. Um, it, it makes me get out of myself. Um, it puts me out there uh, right now, I'm treasure. And so I'm involved that way. And I'm on church council. I have been on the call committee 
here recently, which was just an amazing experience. Um, to have a group of people get together in faith like that, just watch them, the Holy Spirit work, it's just amazing. Um, St. John has been here actually to catch me and support me when I went through my divorce with Cindy. Um, there were many people in the congregation that reached out and, and supported me. And that was, that was really important at that time. Uh, my, my faith family carried me through there. Um, it challenges me. Um, the things we do, like Faith on the Go or um, Compassion Vancouver, stuff like that, uh, reaching out in the community, the, the free car washes we give, um, it just energizes me. And, and then working with the youth, that's one of my passions. You know that, I mean. Yeah. We, we work. Yeah, yeah. small group and uh, that's our fellowship we meet once a month uh, we are probably one of the more diverse small groups around we're on opposite sides of the coin politically and everything else but uh, when we get together all of that's set aside and we have a good time I'm doing great, thanks. You have your Bible out and you are ready to go and hit me with Bible verses, aren't you? <laughs> Something like that. Um, so, how do you serve at St. John? Wow, good question. Well, that's kind of why I have the Bible in front of me here. I, I was helping lead a Bible study this morning. Um, the Bible study we're doing right now is uh, tied in with uh, 100 Bible verses everyone should know by heart by Robert Morgan. And so we're really working closely with those who want to study and make scripture a bigger part of their life. Uh, memorize scripture so that it can be with us at all times and all places and even when we don't have our Bible with us. As one of the class members said, uh, I asked one time what's important about scripture memorization and uh, one of the ladies said, well, you never know, someday our Bibles could be taken away from us. Yeah. So, wow. So we, we really feel scripture is an important part of our congregation. And uh, it was a class that I was not planning to give this quarter, uh, but God kept laying it on my heart. And we did it a few years ago, and so we're doing it again. And I, I really um, enjoy serving as a small group leader, if you want to call it that. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it it also spills over into my uh, the rest of my week because I also lead a business leaders uh, study group on Fridays at lunch mm -hmm. in, in my office building and um, that's been very impactful for me as well as for the people in the group. I think it's a great way to become better um, prepared <coughs> and better equipped to yeah. share the word with other people. At times, it's 
uh, where they are receptive.